was a hit and run by a drunk driver today at Quahog Park. Two children are missing. <gasps> I was just there. From Peter forklifting a whale to Stewie getting pregnant with his own dog, here's our top 10 list of the most shocking moments in Family Guy. Number 10, Quagmire's cat. What do we got, partner? Empty alcohol containers, the driver is inebriated and covered in blood, he's got scratches on his face and arms, there's a blood-soaked corpse in the back seat, he's got shovels in there, and a hand-drawn map titled, This is Where We'll Hide the Body. At some point in the show, many of us have harbored disdain for Quagmire due to his questionable actions, such as sleeping with his best friend's wife or seducing his best friend's daughter. However, there's a side to him that remains unknown, his love for animals. Since I found this little guy living under my house, I'll tell you this. I understand now why the pharaohs worshipped these animals. In a particular episode, when he discovers a cat living under his house, he begins to spend more time with the feline than his friends, triggering jealousy in Peter. I hate Quagmire lately. Me too. That cat has totally changed his personality. Out of envy, Peter decides to play a prank on Quagmire by bringing along a straight razor and attempting to shave the cat. Unfortunately, the attempt goes poorly and Peter ends up inflicting hideous damage on the cat, mistakenly believing it has nine lives. Oh my god! Peter, you killed it! Well, you guys relax. He's got eight more lives. Okay, seven more lives. Six. Five. In this instance, Peter's stupidity overwhelms his morals, much to the horror of both Cleveland and Joe. Number nine, a virgin. Jesus, what kind of girls do you like? Women? Like, uh, hot ladies. Horny ones who sex on you. What? Yeah, you know, they come back to your house and sit on your butt. Wait a minute. Jesus, have you ever been with a woman? Religion is another subject that Family Guy has never shied away from when it comes to offensive humor. In a particular episode, Peter and Lois unexpectedly encounter Jesus in Quahog. Surprisingly, they learn that Jesus lingers in the town, uncomfortable with his home life with God. Peter, along with Quagmire, Cleveland, and Joe, decides to take Jesus out for drinks at the Drunken Clam, only to discover that Jesus is still a virgin. Are you a virgin? <sighs> yeah, I am. How the hell does that happen? They make a pact to help him lose his virginity, attempting various methods, including speed dating, which ultimately leaves Peter disappointed. In a desperate attempt, Peter turns to his wife, Lois, to assist Jesus in breaking his virginity, and she reluctantly agrees. Peter, listen, I've found the woman who I'd like to lose my virginity to. Actually, Peter, I want my first time to be with Lois. Lois, my partner at the law firm? No, Peter, it's your Lois, Lois Griffin. What? However, the shocking twist comes when they find out that Jesus is not a virgin. In fact, he has been bribing men with gifts to sleep with their wives. This dark humor surrounding religious matters stirred significant backlash among the Christian community as the portrayal of Jesus in such a context proved shocking and controversial to many viewers. For you, you're a liar, Jesus. Number eight, who's the killer? Hey, what are you doing up here? Wait a minute, what the hell is this? Oh my God, it's you. The man or woman who's been killing everybody. Stay back, stay back. In a departure from the norm, Family Guy ventures into themed storytelling in season nine with an intriguing parody of classic murder mysteries. <gasps> did, the, did the cork hit me? The episode kicks off with the Griffins receiving invitations to a mysterious dinner party at an island manor creating an atmosphere reminiscent of Agatha Christie murder mysteries and the film Clue. The unsuspecting host is revealed to be a born-again James Woods, seeking redemption for his past misdeeds. However, the seemingly reconciliatory gathering takes a dark turn when guests are systematically eliminated, starting with Woods himself. He's dead. The twist in this murder mystery, unfolding within the show's established continuity, adds an extra layer of intrigue. My sweet Muriel, she was so young, she was so beautiful, she was so generous, uh, we were married. As Lois uncovers the shocking revelation that news anchor Diane Simmons orchestrated the killings, a subsequent altercation with Lois leads to Diane's demise at the hands of Stewie. If anybody's gonna take that bitch down, it's gonna be me. The impactful deaths within the show's ongoing narrative truly left audiences in awe. Number seven, Quagmire kills the Simpsons. What do you say we go back to your place for round two? Sounds good to me.
The crossover episodes between The Simpsons and Family Guy are typically cherished for adding an extra layer of rivalry among the characters. However, one particular episode introduces a fake banner advertisement for The Simpsons, setting the stage for a disturbing sequence. Quagmire intrudes, making non-consensual advances towards Marge, leading to an inexplicable scenario where she falls for him. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Oh, I gotta say, that was fantastic. And they proceed to her place. The cringeworthy narrative takes a darker turn when Homer catches them in bed, prompting Quagmire to shoot him. Quagmire then proceeds to shoot the entire Simpson family, Marge, Bart, Lisa, and even little Maggie, resulting in their tragic demise. Hey, what's going on here? Ah, get off my wife! Oh my god, oh my god! <gasps> you shot my homie! I'm calling the police! I can remember, Mom and Dad are dead. Oh no! Who will pay for my saxophone lessons? Fortunately, the actual murders occur off screen, with only the exterior of the Simpsons house visible. This crossover episode undoubtedly stands out as a shocking and unexpected turn of events between these two iconic shows. Number 6. Trip to Hell <laughs> In a mysterious episode, Brian and Stewie, known for their unconventional escapades, find themselves at the center of their own storyline. As news spreads about an impending hurricane in Quahog, the Griffins brace for its arrival. Seeking to pass the time, Brian, to Stewie's surprise, decides to ingest magic mushrooms. The hallucinogenic effects quickly take hold, leading to a surreal and unsettling experience as Brian inadvertently cuts off his own ear. Brian? I'm gonna cut my ear off to prevent World War II. Ah! Oh God! Oh God! Recognizing Brian's distress, Stewie takes it upon himself to stay by his side throughout the night, offering care and support. However, when Brian falls asleep, a nightmare scenario unfolds in his dreams. He finds himself attacked by monstrous beings bearing a resemblance to the Griffins and Quagmire, creating a horrifying and shocking portrayal of hellish scenarios. The episode leaves viewers empathizing with the unfortunate ordeal Brian endures during this nightmarish journey. Round, the wheels on the bus go round and round. Oh, it. Number five, Peter and the Boston Marathon. <laughs> Holy crap! This is awesome. I haven't felt a rush like this since I won that marathon. Family Guy has consistently found itself entangled in controversies and crafting humor from such situations as a familiar approach for the show. Peter, I think you joined a terrorist sleeper cell. What? That's crazy! Look, I'm gonna call my mood right now on this cell phone he gave me. He'll tell you. Damn phone's busted. Maybe I dialed wrong. In a specific episode, Peter recounts his supposed victory in the Boston Marathon. Shockingly, he reveals that he drove his car to the finish line, causing fatalities along the way. Peter, how did you do it? I'll tell you, Bob, I just got in my car and drove it. And when there was a guy in my way, I killed him. While the joke may have seemed uninspired at the time, it took on a more unsettling dimension when tragedy struck a month later with the Boston Marathon bombings. But this left both fans and creators in a state of shock as there was speculation that the real-life event might have drawn inspiration from this particular scene in the show. Number 4. Pregnant Stewie Having a baby seems to have made them closer. Babies save relationships. Brian and Stewie, renowned as one of the show's most iconic and recognizable dynamic duos, are celebrated for their brilliant chemistry and contrasting personalities, often engaging in an on and off frenemy dynamic. It's kind of a funny story. <laughs> what the hell did you do? He was gonna call the cops, man. You can't call the cops on Santa. Now help me move this guy's body. However, Stewie takes their friendship to an unexpected and shocking level in a surprising twist. In a bizarre attempt to forge a closer bond with Brian, Stewie goes so far as to impregnate himself with the dog's DNA. I took your DNA and inserted it into my temporary uterus through my fertilization device. Oh my god, you're serious! People are gonna think I had sex with a male baby and then got him pregnant! 
Oh, thank you for finding a way to make it sound horrible. While the prospect of Stewie experiencing the joys of impending motherhood might have seemed comical, the humor takes a dark turn given Stewie's toddler status. The eventual childbirth unfolds in a horrifically gruesome manner, even without explicitly depicting the actual birth. I don't want anything to get on the seats. Oh no, of course, our first priority should be to keep the vinyl clean. To add to the unsettling scenario, their offspring turn out to be human-puppy hybrids, plagued by birth defects that lead to the demise of some. In a disturbing turn of events, Stewie and Brian ultimately abandon the remaining hybrids at a shelter. While undeniably an iconic duo, this particular storyline ventures into a realm of disturbing narrative choices that left audiences uneasy and questioning the boundaries of comedic content. Number 3. Crossing All Limits So what I would need you to do is eat what's in my diaper, lick the diaper clean, and then put the diaper back on me. We discuss Stewie's unsettling act of impregnating himself with Brian's DNA to strengthen their friendship. Now, the narrative takes a disturbing turn as Brian commits a horrendous act to elevate their bond. During a visit to the local Quahog Bank to deposit money in a safe deposit box, Brian and Stewie find themselves trapped inside the vault after closing hours. Mm. I don't believe this. Hello? Hello? We're locked in! Stewie, in distress, soils his diaper. Hearing about potential rash from the dirty diaper, Stewie resorts to an extreme and disturbing solution. He attempts to force Brian to eat his feces using a gun stored in Brian's deposit box. Easy, all right? I, I don't want any trouble. There's not going to be any trouble as long as you eat my poo. Discovering a cell phone with limited battery charge, Stewie opts to call a clothing store instead of seeking help. Enraged, Brian reacts harshly, slapping Stewie, smashing his phone, and shouting at him, reducing Stewie to tears. That really hurt. Just get away from me! I can't even look at you! What? I'm, I'm sorry, don't be mad. Don't! In a moment of remorse, Brian reluctantly agrees to eat Stewie's feces as a form of apology. However, the act takes an even more nauseating turn as Stewie, unable to stomach the sight, vomits. <laughs> <laughs> In a bizarre turn of events, Stewie convinces Brian to eat his vomit. The scene concludes with Stewie persuading Brian to clean his bottom with his tongue to avoid infection. Unquestionably, this sequence leaves an appalling taste in both Brian's and the viewer's mouths, evoking disgust rather than shock. All right, now let's get this diaper back on you. Oh, wait, and I, I can do this part. Number 2. Peter Forklift the Whale This whale's beached himself! He needs to get back in the water or he'll die! Step aside, I'll handle this. Give me some room. <laughs> Peter Griffin's innate ability to turn joyous situations into disasters takes center stage in one episode where he secures a promotion as a forklift operator at work. With his newfound position, Peter decides to have a bit too much fun, attempting to use the forklift to rescue a beached sperm whale. Unfortunately, his good intentions lead to a tragic accident as the poor mammal ends up accidentally impaled. The subsequent scene is a horrifying spectacle lasting a whole minute, where Peter desperately tries to dislodge the creature. only to witness it gruesomely fall apart with blood and organs spilling out. While the beachgoers understandably endure trauma from the grotesque display, Peter, seemingly oblivious to the distress he caused, remains singularly focused on showcasing his forklift skills. The episode leaves viewers empathizing with the unfortunate fate of the whale, whose suffering stands as a stark contrast to Peter's oblivious pursuit of self-glory. Number 1. Brian's Death Doctor, how is Brian? Is he gonna be okay? I'm so sorry, Mrs. Griffin, but Brian's injuries are just too severe for us to save him. I don't know how much longer he has, but I suggest that you all go in and say your goodbyes. Admittedly, many of us have been fans of Brian, especially for the unforgettable moments he shared with the Griffin family, particularly Stewie. One such moment occurred in Season 12's Life of Brian, which featured the shocking death of Brian Griffin. The beloved dog is tragically hit by a car while playing street hockey with Stewie, and he later succumbs to his injuries in the hospital after bidding farewell to the family. Brian, no! I can't believe it. You, you really... Damn it, Brian, you can't die! We were gonna do so many things together! We were going to become windsurfers. I was going to be a little better than you, but we were both going to be good. 
The emotional scene plays out with a surprising realism, depicting a scenario that many viewers could relate to. Understandably, fans were horrified and some even enraged, prompting the launch of a petition to bring Brian back. The episode concludes with the Griffins adopting a new dog, leaving some viewers to believe that Brian's departure was permanent. However, this wasn't the case as Stewie miraculously brings him back to life just two episodes later. Brian, look out! What the hell? You're alive, my friend! What? Of course I'm alive. What the hell's going on here? Despite the eventual revival, the genuine shock of witnessing the death of a beloved character left viewers chilled and made it the most shocking moment in the history of Family Guy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please be sure to subscribe and like the video for more Family Guy content. 